The training of a medieval knight was a long and extensive process. It involved rigorous physical training, military training, but it also included training in the law and the administration of estates. We could say that the making of a knight began at birth because for the most part you were born into this. You were the son of a knightly family. Your father was a knight. This gave you the right to be trained and raised as a knight. Your father would have ensured that from the time you were very small you began learning how to sit on a horse, how to be around horses. This would have started with a very small horse like a pony and gradually you would work up from there. Because knights, this was their social standing. They were horsemen. This was central to their identity. It's interesting because the very earliest education of a medieval knight would have been in the hands of the women of the castle, the noble ladies. You would have learned uh, etiquette, manners. You would have learned religion. So prayers, things like this, and perhaps music, poetry, uh, various things about court life and uh, your station as a member of the knightly rank. Uh, this would have been a very small child, under seven years of age. Your formal training as a knight would have begun around the age of seven, and at this point you would become a page. And this would last until you were maybe 12, 13, 14, somewhere around there. So what was life like for a page? Well, part of making your way in the world meant that you would go off to another court. So you would leave your family, most likely at this age, this is a very young age to, uh, you know, for, a, for parents to send their child away. I mean, me personally, I think about this, it just seems impossible, you know, the thought of sending your child away like this. But this is what would have happened. At around the age of seven, you would have gone off to another court, most likely the court of a relative. Uh, and ideally, this would be a relative who was of a higher station than your immediate family. So maybe your mother she's the sister of the count of such and such some great lord well you're gonna hopefully go off to his court and serve as a page there and this is part of making your way in the world so you're already building up your cv as a knight to use a present day metaphor uh, what would a page have done well you would have done a lot of on the job training and this would have involved some very rigorous work you would have done the very basic service at court. So you would have uh, helped with banquets, helped with serving food, uh, serving wine and things like that. This may seem like just making the newbie do all the grunt work, but it really was not that. This was valuable on the job training because you were at the center of power. This was where lords and ladies conducted statecraft, where they received guests and discussed policy. You were right there, so you were already learning the basics of, of politics from your lord as a page. The other thing you would have been doing at this time is basic uh, training in the military arts. So you would have learned uh, the care of horses, uh, how to take care of a knight's horse, some of the basics of that. You would have learned this from the squires. You would have learned the basic maintenance of weapons and armor, that sort of thing. At the age of around 13 or 14, your tenure as a page would end and you would become a squire. And a squire was the assistant to a knight. This is somebody who would accompany a knight on his campaigns. He would help him with his armor, help him with his horse, and sometimes even fight alongside his knight, especially more experienced squires. So this was where the the real thing began. This was rigorous military training. You would learn everything about maintaining armor and weapons, everything about getting the horse ready, the proper care of tack, tacking up a horse for battle, all this important stuff. This was rigorous physical training. These were athletes. Knights were athletes. You would have learned um, how to fight on horseback, how to you know wield your lance and your shield while fighting on horseback. You would have learned with your fellow squires to fight in formation. You would have learned all sorts of maneuvers, various signals on the battlefield. The drilling would have been intense. We can imagine long hours of rigorous physical activity and all sorts of uh, activities like wrestling, uh, activities that would simulate siege warfare, endurance rides in full armor. Hunting and hawking, these were primary uh, training mechanisms for medieval knights. Hunting was the favorite leisure activity of medieval knights. These would have been intense, uh, and these were opportunities to train to fight in a group, 
to uh, coordinate with your fellow horsemen. Hunting would have developed your eye for terrain, so you'd learn to, to gain an understanding of surface and slope and vantage point and all these important things you need to know in a combat situation. The training of a knight did not just involve physical military training. You also learned to be a governor because knights, they were the ruling elite. You would have learned law. You would have learned the administration of an estate. Knights judged cases. They would sit in council with their lord and determine the proper dispensation of justice. We know that El Cid, for example, was called upon to judge cases for his king, Alfonso VI. The final achievement in all this, of course, was knighthood itself. And this would usually be conferred upon you by the lord or even the monarch. Uh, this would come at around the age of 20 or so. And this involved an increasing amount of ceremony as the Middle Ages wore on. Uh, in our accounts of the life of El Cid, uh, we, we read that El Cid was girded with the belt of knighthood by his lord, Sancho II. So the sword belt is this important symbol of joining the brotherhood of the knightly rank. I think from movies and television and things like that, we can get this impression that a king was one thing and the knights were something else. They were below him. And it is true that a king was at the top of the hierarchy, but a king was himself a knight. A king would be knighted just like uh, any other knight. He was a part of this order of chivalry. So this was a very important thing. This was, this was at the top of the society and knights dealt with each other in ways that were exclusive to one another. The equipment of a knight was very valuable. This was his sword, his shield, his helmet, his mail suit, his hauberks. This is his chainmail armor his spurs, his saddle, his bridle. All right, guys, that's my brief discussion of the making of a medieval knight. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will talk to you soon.